Well, it's wintertime at Mount Vernon, and people often ask what we do at the Millen Distillery in the wintertime. Well, obviously, we're not running. It's so cold in here. But what we do accomplish is a lot of maintenance work to keep this machinery going. And one of the key things we do here with the millstones is sharpen them, which the term they use for that is dressing the stones. And we have a gentleman here who's an expert millstone dresser who's been doing it about 30 years. He's also a miller, and uh, his name is Rob Grossi. And so Rob's going to talk to you all about why this is so important and how the trade is done. Well, Rob, it's, it's real good to have you in the mill doing this work for us because without you sharpening these stones regularly, we just could not grind the grain properly. And for visitors who've been to Mount Vernon or uh, seen our things that we posted online, the stones are usually covered by wooden apparatus right, what we call right. mill furniture. Mm -hmm. And it simply has a hopper that, and a casing and that delivers the grain in between these two stones. The bottom stone we're looking at, that's the one that never turns, right? Mm -hmm. Stationary, yeah, called the bedstone. And then up here we have the runner stone, which is now up on the crane, mm -hmm. but normally this is made to fit right down on that spindle, and the power of the water wheel and the gears rotates that stone, and that's mm -hmm. how we accomplish the grinding. Right. But obviously now you've got your stone up here, so could you talk a little bit about what you've done here and what you're working on? Sure. Well, when I first got here, uh, we lifted the runner stone off, turned it upside down, exposing the grinding face, and uh, you can see I've recut the pattern back in the stones. And that's critical, that pattern's called the millstone dress pattern. And it's been around actually for thousands of years. The Greeks and the Romans used it. And uh, it, it's really imperative to have a millstone dress pattern because it really grinds and shears that grain and moves it out when it's working. And I'm not sure if people know how millstones work, but the, the grain flows in through the top stone it's caught between the top and bottom millstone, drawn in by these grooves we call uh, furrows, and it works its way around, gradually getting finer and finer until it exits the stones as finished flour. And then of course you can see the hole over there in the floor where everything goes down to be sifted. So uh, over time, if you're running a lot of grain through a stone as Washington's mill did, it's gonna wear down these grooves, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, these millstones don't touch each other. That's very, very critical, as you know, as a miller. But uh, they do wear down from the friction of the grinding process. And we have to renew and resharpen the stones in a mill that was working like George Washington's mill maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. That often, have, huh? Yeah, that often. Yeah. Yeah. So here I am down on the millstones, and uh, I was just working on a section of them, recutting the pattern. We talked about the millstone dress pattern. and. Uh, I'm using some tools that haven't changed for centuries, really. Uh, the only thing that has changed is I cheat a little bit and I have carbide tool steel tips that are put in place of just a uh, high carbon tool steel. And uh, it basically, this is a thrift. It's a wooden handle and it holds the metal picker bill. I've got several of them here. And it's basically just a stone cutting chisel but it's really highly refined. And I'm gonna show you just quickly here. And I just lift and drop the tool and cut the pattern back in the stones. And we talked about millstone dress and how critical it is. It's divided really into two portions. We have the deeper grooves that are called furrows. And between the furrows are these flat surfaces we call lands. Just like in a farm field, you have furrows and lands, plowed field, it's agriculture, it's been called that for centuries. And the furrows have a deeper section. They taper up fine right to the lands, called the feather edge. And the lands themselves, they have cracking lines or stitching, we call it. We have to cut that back in occasionally because they do wear. And that's where all the flowering, the fine flowering happens right up on these lands. Grain flows in, the center starts to move its way out and gets abraded by this. Very critical. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the art of millstone dressing from Robert Grassi and uh, appreciate his skill today and knowledge. And please come back to Mount Vernon this spring. The mill opens April 1st and those stones will be grinding grain once again.